David, and I'm here to talk about monitoring. Hello, I'm David, and I'm here to talk about monitoring the monitor. Or, if a Prometheus falls, does it make a sound? Using Prometheus to monitor your service, but what monitors your Prometheus? So, probably the first query you come across when you learn Prometheus is something like this. Uh, is Prometheus up, or actually, is it down? So, this is an alert that if the metric up with a job label matching Prometheus is zero, then the query will return results. Um, so you can use this in an alert with something like job down with an expression of up, job Prometheus is zero, and then it will raise an alert with the annotation Prometheus down, for example. So that's quite simple, um, but that's not enough to actually monitor Prometheus itself because, well, it's not a cartoon, it's not that simple, and you can't monitor yourself with yourself. So, going back to the basics again, the architecture of a normal Prometheus setup is something like this. We have Prometheus talking to an alert manager, sending alerts to some kind of alert receiver. So, we only have one of each of these. Now, the receiver is maybe something like page duty where someone else takes responsibility for actually making that reliable for you. But Prometheus and Alert Manager, unless you're using a managed service, are probably your responsibility. So a common setup is to run multiple of them. So a pair of Prometheus instances monitoring the same target, and then also Alert Manager in a cluster mode of some kind, and these ideally running on different machines. So there's now some level of resiliency there, which is good. But what happens if the receiver is down or unreachable? Well, alert manager tries to raise an alert, um, but it can't go anywhere. So, for example, Prometheus raises an alert like this, saying job's down, and then can't go to the receiver. So a common approach in the past was to have some kind of backup device connected to your server directly, which meant you could use the internet and also SMS, for example. Um, obviously, it's a bit difficult to connect a phone to a server in the cloud. So how people often do with this is rather than alerting when something is down, have a particular alert that exists as a heartbeat that is always expected, which then is always sent to the receiver and the receiver somewhere on the internet knows that it should expect to receive an alert and if it doesn't then it raises an alert so it inverts alerting essentially saying if there isn't an alert then start raising an alert so there are many ways of doing this uh, healthchecks.io provide a service that does this which is written in python you can run it yourself, or there's a cloud-hosted version of it. Uh, Deadman Snitch integrates with PagerDuty and is cloud-hosted. Karma, which is a web-based UI for Alert Manager, can also display an alert when a particular alert isn't present. So that obviously doesn't page anyone, but can show on a screen or something that there's a problem, which if you have a knock or something could potentially be useful. Um, alternatively, to do something entirely custom, so let's look at how we actually set up Alert Manager to talk to our heartbeat receiver. In the Alert Manager config, we have a route that matches a label of severity heartbeat and then sends that to a particular heartbeat receiver. And you'll see in this example, the URL has an ID in it, which would be team specific or um, specific to each Prometheus instance that is monitored by the receiver at the other end, which unfortunately then means that this alert manager file needs to have every ID for everything that is monitored in it. Um, obviously that's not too difficult, so it can be templated or various other approaches, but it still means that this is yet another thing to configure and the configuration needs to be managed and so on. Um, it's yet another moving part, essentially. So instead, with PromOSD, we have the same alert that we had before, 
but in this alert you'll see that there are some um, annotations that have MSD um, at the start of them, uh, which essentially tell PROMMSD how it should behave. Um, the activation is the activation time, um, some labels to override, and then the alert managers to send the alert to, which is unfortunately the one thing that PROMMSD um, compromises on. It can't support dynamic alert manager discovery because the alert managers have to be actually specified in the alert itself. Um, although potentially we could fix that with some changes elsewhere in the future. Um, but this does mean that all the configuration for a Teams um, alert is actually contained in the alert itself and nothing special is needed for heartbeat alerts. Obviously they probably would have team specific routing in the central alert manager, but they don't need separate configuration for heartbeats, which you know might get forgotten or so on because it's not used all the time and so on. So what then happens is this, in this case, raises two alerts for each of our um, high availability pair, and those go to problem SD. So let's actually see how this works. So over here, I have um, some of the example configs that come with problem SD. So there's just a config directory, and I'm running four terminals here. Um, first of all, I'm just running a netcat listening on a random port. This is going to be the normal alert receiver, so we'll, we'll just see the HTTP requests that are sent to that. So inside PrimeMSD, this configs directory has an alert manager config, an alert and a Prometheus config. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run alert manager using that proof provided config. Um, I'm also just going to run Prometheus and Prometheus will then be running. So you'll notice I haven't yet started Prime SD. So I also just need to do that. So we now have Prometheus, Alert Manager and Prime SD all running. And let's just first of all go to Prometheus here. And if we look at the alerts UI, you now see this expected alert heartbeat is active and we can see as I discussed all the activation things. You'll see in this case though that I've put the activation at one minute. But you also notice this alert for now is not actually active because there's a four threshold of 30 seconds just to make sure that the previous instance isn't flapping. So this alert is still pending. Hopefully I've spoken for long enough, I have, and that alert is now firing. So that now means that we have an expected alert heartbeat that is firing. So what's happening to that? Well, that is going to Alert Manager, which uh, conveniently I have running here. Um, and we now see there's an alert for expected alert heartbeat over here that we have the relevant annotations on. Um, and if we check where that's going, that's going to PROMMSD and actually our page has no alerts going to it. Okay, so then if we go over to PromMSD over here, we'll see we just have a Prometheus. Um, and in this case, it's not running in Kubernetes, so there's no namespace or anything, it's just Prometheus, which obviously in a real setup, you would have a few more uh, labels there, but this for a demo, this works. So you'll see that that is saying it will activate in a few seconds. And I've actually got this set, I think, to repeat every five seconds. So if I just sit reloading this page, you'll see it actually never gets below about 55 seconds. So now let's just go to where we were running uh, Prometheus and I'll just kill it. Okay, so that was Prometheus, yes. So I've now stopped Prometheus. So actually that's interesting because you'll see this alert is now still active. And that's because Alert Manager over here still knows about this alert for now. Um, I've actually set the, in the Prometheus config, the evaluation interval to 
15 seconds. So if I carry on talking for about four times 15 seconds, um, we should eventually find that that alert stops being sent. Uh, luckily this demo isn't live, so if this fails, I'll just edit it. Okay, so it's now about to activate. I'm just hitting refresh here so you can see what's happening. There we go. So it's now gone red and says it's sent an alert. So if we go back to this alert manager and have a look, yep, the heartbeat's disappeared and we now have a no alert connectivity alert. And in theory, if we go here, we should actually get an alert delivered to us. Um, there we go. So, We've now been told we have no alert connectivity. So that's how Problem MSD works. Okay, so obviously that's a very simple setup and in reality you'd have a few more components involved. So um, a full architecture of deploying it might look something like this. You have three teams running Prometheus instances for applications which talk to an alert manager cluster. The alert manager cluster routes to PromoSD as well as things in the cloud for other alerting, um, as well as an infrastructure of Prometheus, for example, that rather than using the PromoSD running locally in the cluster, uses something in the cloud, which could also be uh, another instance of PromoSD running elsewhere, or it could be one of the mentioned cloud monitoring services. Um, and you'll also notice if you follow the red line that if PromoSD here detects that there's a problem, it sends it to Alert Manager, but it also sends it to a webhook receiver, which goes straight to something elsewhere, um, which means PromoSD doesn't need to depend on anything other than a webhook receiver, which could run on the same machine or you know, even in the same um, pod as a as PromoSD in Kubernetes. Um, and yeah, as, as mentioned, the infrastructure of Prometheus has a separate monitoring that is potentially in a different cluster or elsewhere. So the infrastructure team can be notified if everything is broken. Um, application teams can be notified if their Prometheus is broken by an explicit alert. But if they actually are running in multiple clusters, maybe they don't need to be told about their actual application being down if it's an infrastructure problem because the probers don't fail. Um, and it means that, you know, you don't get a critical alert, everything is broken when actually it's not all broken. So there's flexibility in how you, how you set this up that means you can make sure that the alerts are actually actionable and so on. So PromoSD is now open source and it's available on our GitHub there. So thank you to G Research for uh, supporting my work in open sourcing this. And thank you for going to this presentation. <laughs>